Hi everybody, this is Susan Gerbeck. I'm starting a new series. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different from the John Edward videos that I recorded recently because um, I'm looking at a completely different psychic medium this time. This person is Thomas John and he is um, one of the people that I've done a lot of investigating with over the years and every time we have um, done any kind of investigation into him we found discovered that he is hot reading now hot reading is completely different than what john edward does john edward is a cold reader and that's been documented for years people have been researching him for a long time so the difference is a hot reader knows information going in to the sitting and a cold reader is somebody who goes in cold and they don't have any information they're just relying on what little they can glean from you um, your voice, your what you look like, if they can see you. Um, and then they play, they just do like generic kind of things like, you know, a person who's in her 60s, probably her grandfather's dead. Uh, a woman who's in her 30s is probably has young children and is probably thinking about having more or not having more or something like that. So th they're just playing like odds. Um, things that feel very specific, but actually are not very specific because we as humans are more like each other than we realize. So what I'm going to do is this is a 20 minute, 20 minute um, recording that he did over the phone on, it looks like February of February 24th, 2023. Somebody sent me this, this audio. It's only audio. So you get to look at me. <laughs> it is with a, um, a radio show. I think she's out of Connecticut. Her name is Lisa Wexler, and I've never heard of her before. And what happens with Thomas John, and the same thing happened with John Edward, is they go on to these shows that will give them free press right before they're going to be doing another show somewhere. So it's, it's used as a promotion. Um, I don't know who this Lisa Wexler was, but I did look her up, and she does have a Wikipedia page, and she's a Connecticut probate judge. Um, talk show host, creator, executive producer of the Lisa Wexler show. It is, um, she's in Connecticut and she seems to be very popular. She had been a Republican and then she turned into a Democrat for whatever reason. Um, she's got a law degree. She's worked in a real estate company and lots and lots and lots and lots of, lots and lots of things, nice things said about her. You would think she'd be really a critical thinker. Okay. So, it's not my judgment if these people believe it or if th what they're doing or they have ulterior motives to believe in mediumship because number one, they think there's no harm in it. Number two, it's a crime against women and maybe they don't care <laughs> that it's a crime against women. Um, it sells. People love these kinds of things and people are more likely to come and uh, get clicks when you have a psychic medium on and um, it just really pulls at your heart. So there's a lot of reasons, you know, favors, money, who knows? It, it's um, why somebody who would want to support it, I don't know. But I think this lady is, uh, Lisa is definitely believes that there is communication in life after death. So now this is an unedited um, radio uh, inter, um, readings. So keep in mind that when you hear a psychic medium over the radio or it's or you know doing a one with somebody else you know it's unlikely it's been edited so it will probably feel very different from one that has a, a tv show like if you're watching thomas john on psychic on uh, seatbelt psychic those are extremely edited to down to the second and uh, i have articles showing how they manipulate the the visual from the audio so they they move them to make it sound the best hit and there's i have an article about that somewhere if you're interested let me know so i'm going to do this in several readings i'm going to do several different clips so the first one we're going to start off with is the one where he's doing with lisa she's going to ask him do you see anybody around me so i'm going to let him talk and let her talk and then i'm going to interrupt so i'm going to do you know back and forth quite a few times i hope that's not too distracting um and 
then when it gets to the next person, the person who's calling in, I'm going to stop and I'm going to shoot that as another video because these can, can get quite lengthy and I really don't want them to be too lengthy, but I, I want to make sure I don't forget anything. First thing I'm going to mention, though, is that we are not to belittle the sitter. The sitter is, um, is for whatever reason, is believes in the psychic and is probably extremely nervous about the whole situation. Um, they are they believe this is real. So um, it's it is is not their fault that, that these things are happening to them. OK, um, it may be willful ignorance because obviously the information on mediumship has been out for since Houdini. Uh, explaining how this is actually done but now we have better tools so we can stop it we can analyze it and i can get it out to you guys on a youtube channel so um the other thing i should make sure i'm going to make um, point out is that the burden of proof for mediumship is not on me it's not on the science world it's not on uh, scientific skeptics skeptics to prove it is on the person making the claim for example if somebody says I can fly without benefit of wings or whatever. I can just jump off a building and I can fly. Okay. That is not for me to tell them you can't fly because of physics, because of, you know, this, and you're just going to fall. It is not gravity. It's not for me to explain that to the person. The person making the extraordinary claim has the burden of proof. This is just how it works. Okay. But because I really enjoy these kinds of things, I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you. And because I have a lot of experience doing this, as well as I don't think there's anybody really doing it and breaking it down in the detail that I'm going to. So there. Sorry, I am had such a long intro. Let's get right to it. So Lisa has um, talked to Thomas John, uh, introduced him. She, she gave the audience all her directions on how to get to the video as if GPS doesn't work, but she told him what exit to take and all that kind of stuff. Just adorable. Okay, so she's plugging his show that's coming up. She throws a lot of nonsense at him, just like a gobbledygook, easy low ball questions. And he answers them with with airy fairy, you know, things he's made up. And I don't want to play any of that for time reasons and because it's just what he says. Like why should I trust what he says? I I, you know, so he says it. That's nice. Okay, then she asks this really interesting question, and uh, she asks, why is it whenever the dead connect with us, they rarely say anything profound, and it's mostly mundane things, why not the secrets of life? And then he, he kind of laughs, he says, oh, they're just trying to tell you they love you, and that you're connected, and, and so on. So that's all there. I don't think he liked that answer, because it's She's saying, why don't they ever get anything specific or, or, or really important? You know, like what's the password for the um, Netflix account or something, or where, do, where are the keys? I cannot find the keys anywhere. You know, nothing like that. It's always like, so are you around me? And they say, yes, we're around you. We love you. And Okay. I'm going to put in the description of this video, the whole interview. And if you want to listen to it first before I get to it and analyze it, then please do so. Pause this, stop this, come back to my analysis after you've listened to it, because I think it's really interesting to see what you hear and what I hear. And then let's talk about it in the comments. So please give me some uh, feedback. I've turned this up kind of loud because it's I'm not sharing the screen. Um, we have to be able to hear the audio. And I think you'll be able to hear this pretty good. So. He's at a point now that she's done all her intro. And now before she gets to the callers, she's asking him, do you see anything around me? So hopefully this goes well. I haven't listened to this except little tiny bits here and there. So I'm listening to it for the first time in full as you may be if you haven't listened to it in full. But my team, somebody on my team has already listened to this and said this would be a good example to to uh, start off with. Okay, here we go. But I, I know what you're saying, because sometimes I, I just crack up laughing because it's like, yeah, they're talking about like, oh, you know, you need to clean this closet out. Right. Or you need to go, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> right. 
So, so Thomas, we got a bunch of people holding for you already, but of course I have to be selfish and ask you, is there anybody around me right now? Um, hmm. um, I do feel two people around you, um, one more stronger than the other. Um, so I feel a male figure around you, um, who I do feel like you knew in life. Um, and, um, actually I, I feel two men around you. So there's two men around you. One, I'm not getting as clear of a hit on, but the other one I, I feel much more stronger about. Um, so this man is showing me, um, I don't know if he, uh, it's weird. I don't feel like you would have spent a ton of time with him, but I feel like you did know him. He, I, I don't know if he might have been sickly because I'm getting that feeling. Um, and he also keeps telling me, too, he's not giving me, like, a name, but I keep hearing, um, I keep hearing Papa. So, um, Lisa, do you have anybody that you actually would have referred to as Papa? I have two. Okay. So let me ask you then this, Lisa. Um, do you have one that I might be picking up on that was a little bit more sickly or might have been very sick? Yes. You think that makes sense? Okay. Because this person, for some reason, I'm seeing sickness in this person's life. Um, and um, it almost seems like, I don't know, I can't really explain it. It almost feels like... Um, let me ask you this, Lisa. Do you do you know a lot of people on your mom's side, or uh, like, do you know that side of your family? Do you know your maternal side? Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about, and it's very weird. Okay. It's very weird, Thomas okay. John, because this person you're talking about, I only used to call him Papa, right? I had two Papas. Okay. This is who I'm was, picking up on then. Yes, so it's Papa Jack or yeah. Papa Benny, but this one I oh, uh, Papa Jack, I called him Papa or Papa Jack, and this is my mother's father. And he was mm -hmm. very, he, he had, he had a terrible old age, Thomas. He, um, first what happened is he was a traveling salesman and in the middle of an icy winter in Virginia, he slipped on ice and broke his hip and they gave him too much anesthesia and his brain was never the same after that. And then after that, there was a series and then the brain declined, the body declined. He ended up dying of colon cancer. I saw him in his last days in a nursing home where he thought I was my mother, right? He thought I was his daughter, not his granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And he was hallucinating and he was skeletal. And I was so sorry that I saw him in that state because it took me years to remember him as the robust, healthy grandfather that used to smoke cigars and I used to see on Sundays. I couldn't get that terrible image out of my mind for years. But the reason that it's weird that you're bringing him up is because I didn't have a particularly close connection with him, but my aunt Cookie did, my mother's sister. And she calls me almost every day to reminisce about Papa Jack. He is in yeah. her thoughts well, all the also, time. Lisa, yeah. Yeah. All I the think time. Also, I, I feel like your aunt, um, when you say your aunt, when you mention that, what I'm feeling is, is um, for some reason, she's, she has a little bit of an openness to not saying that you don't, because I feel like you do too, but I'm just, your aunt feels like, I, I feel like her energy is like, um, I don't know, it's weird, but I feel like she's a little bit like she kind of has a connection to spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm going to pause for a second because keep in mind, well, this is a radio host, so she's very comfortable being on the radio and this is not a, this is not a problem for her, but most sitters, uh, when a psychic is talking to them, a medium is talking to them, they're very nervous. They're very anxious. This is the great John uh, Thomas John who has TV shows and he's, he's uh, you know, they, they feel like um, this is a big deal. So they're very nervous about the whole thing. So it's a lot to take in. Most people don't take notes. Um, if they um, get it recorded or something like that. They tend to just listen to it once or twice. But when you're in the moment of this kind of thing, it's extremely emotional. You're trying really hard to help him make connections. And that's real important to remember is that um, 
what what sitters are told is that the relationship to um, communicating with the dead is very tenuous and that um, it's not an exact science and that uh, the connection can be dropped really easily, like maybe a bad connection with your cell phone. So you you are more likely, especially when you're very motivated to be contacting, you know, somebody's in contact with your dead family members, you feel very motivated to continue that. So what happens is people make immediate connections to whatever it is the psychic is saying if they if they can, and they they really hone in on uh, information and they give a lot of their own information. They get feedback. It's almost impossible not to do. And they will hear what the psychic saying and they will say that's it that's exactly they'll pull from it you know they'll be like that's that's exactly what i was that that's it because let me tell you how the connection works right like if if thomas john had said something about a cigar or a smell of smoke then lisa would have hit right in on yeah that is papa jack because he always used to smoke cigars okay well she didn't but i mean that's an opening that that she would have just grabbed to and so that must be papa jack because i you got the smell of smoke as if nobody else smokes right Okay, so what happens when you're the sitter, and we'll see when we get to the other um, sittings, uh, the other sitters on a different video, if they tend to do this. So just keep that in mind that people are more likely to help the psychic so that the connection stays uh, stays there. Because if it's broken, um, he, he'll just say, okay, well, thank you. Have a nice day. Go to the next caller, right? Okay, so if you're giving too much negative or you're not getting good hits, he's going to just end it and move to somebody else. He'll say, I'm not getting it. So about Papa Jack, I just want to point out that this is extremely typical. I mean, almost all the things I see, uh, especially lately, are people who, first off, they start off with, I'm getting an older figure, an older man, older woman, who could be like a, who appears to be a father figure. I mean, that's like very generic. Who doesn't have an older figure that could be a father figure or could be a mother figure. I mean, that's mom, grandma, in-laws, aunt, older sister. I mean, teacher, pastor. I mean, you know, it hits almost everything. Next door neighbor that you were close to, whatever. Okay, so Lisa hit right in on the Papa. Now, Papa's not an unusual name to get. Papa is a very common name somebody could call a, a, a family member, especially the generation of Lisa. And Lisa's, oh, I'm looking at her Wikipedia page. It doesn't say how, how old she is, but she graduated from uh, John Hopkins University in 1981 with her BA. So she's probably in her late 60s, maybe 70 somewhere around there so it's very likely she would not have a grandfather figure living if she's in her 70s so i know thomas john i have followed him for years so when he says he's got the name papa i think he's got something in his back pocket but let's just ride this out and see where it goes and see what ends up happening with this but usually when he gets a name there's a reason he's got the name Whereas if it was John Edward and he pulled up Papa, it's a cold read, cold reading tactic to just say, you know, something generic. Do you, do I hear a mama? Do I hear a Papa? Do I hear a Mima, Mama, Tia? You know, any of those kinds of names. So let's let's see where we go with this. He's very sickly. Okay, wonderful. He's got that part. She's giving him more information, and now he's talking about Aunt Cookie. Aunt Cookie was raised by Lisa in a way so she might you know it might be something where she does you know she does kind of feel him or something like that because um i, th I think i think that there's a i feel like they do have a little bit of a of a of a, of a connection mm -hmm. let me ask you something yeah. she's very obsessed thomas so maybe you can ask pop about this wait cookie's alive okay i just caught that so cookie is papa's jack's sister so make sure keeping track so she's alive and thomas john knows she's alive and does she know because thomas john did 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 lisa say that she's alive i think she did i think she made it sound like uh aunt cookie had is still alive so i wasn't sure if i caught that right but I, you guys can re-listen tell me if you think 
My Aunt Cookie is obsessed with the fact that she has a grandson who was named after her dad who doesn't speak. He is profoundly uh, intellectually disabled. And she prays all the time for, to Papa Jack that he'll be able to help Jacob, you know, be more of his potential in this world or, or come out of his lock and key or somehow show the world because he doesn't speak. And can you, can you talk to him about that? Um, I feel that, um, let me just see what I'm feeling about that. Cause I feel like, um, yeah. Um, well, I think that you're, uh, I mean, definitely because there's a name connection, right? Yeah. Um, you're, you know, you're, you're there, uh, um, you know, because there's a name connection, um, there, you know, there's, there's, there, there, because there's a name connection, there's definitely a, there's a connection. So, um, I mean, that soul of her grandson has kind of her, uh, you know, a, a free energy, a free will to, you know, maybe we don't know what lessons that soul has. But I do feel psychically an improvement with it. I don't know if it'll be a hundred percent, but I feel like it, it's kind of like, there will be something that shifts with something. I feel like there is going to be something that will be shifting in a way. It may be a small thing, but I feel like it will be. It's. I see it. I see that there will be a shifting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, and also, I'll, your um. Yeah, let's just stop for a second. That was a whole lot of nothing. Because you name your child after somebody, there's a connection. Really? So that does that mean if you don't name your child after the other family member, you're probably not going to have a connection? So if you name your son after your maternal father, father, then they're not going to be very well connected to the other one. I mean, it's just like they're just making up these rules. There's no rules. There's nothing. They're just making this stuff up. It's just something he said. And I, that was a whole lot of nothing. Your your grandfather keeps talking about an um an anniversary that's coming up. That's coming up, not okay. Yeah, like I think it's I think it's a like a, there's a wedding anniversary, something about a something about a fifty fifth wedding anniversary. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's my aunt Cookie's. Wait a minute, what day is today? What day is today? It's today, February. Uh, okay, it's tomorrow, February 25th is Ann Cookie's 55th wedding anniversary. How would you oh, know well. that? That's what I just heard something about a 55th wedding anniversary. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was there. I was eight years old. I walked down the aisle. I was the junior bridesmaid. Oh, my goodness. Wow. How could he know? Oh, M, G, how could he possibly know? something so specific can you guys read my mind what do you think how could he possibly know something so specific do you think he's talking to uncle jack papa jack you think he's talking to somebody else on the other side what would be the most likely way he would know? Let's look. What do you think? This is um, Lisa's sisters, who apparently is a famous actress who, well, I don't know, or a model or something. And if you look at Lisa's uh, Instagram page, you will see that she has a connection to this woman named Jill. Jill Z-A-R-I-N. Now, on Jill's page, Instagram page, there is this post, and it's talking about a happy 50th wedding anniversary to the most special aunt and uncle, my uncle's mother's sister we call Aunt Cookie. And it goes on, it's talking about Aunt Cookie and how she's having her 50th wedding anniversary so let's look and see when that when that post was from 
So let's look at the date underneath her. March 5th, 2018. She shared this on Instagram. So 2018, they were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. 2018 plus five is 2023, which means that Thomas Turn can do math. 50 plus five is 55th wedding anniversary. So it's not hard to find a photo on somebody's Instagram page. There's also all kinds of search ways of searching for things. I'm, I'm really good with Facebook. My team members are really great with Instagram. But on Facebook, you can easily search for the word anniversary for, the, for different words. So here we are having a 50th wedding anniversary in 2018, March. Okay. And then there's also this post from 2016, also on Lisa's sister's page, Jill. This is a photograph of her Papa Benny and Papa Jack. So my point is, it's not that hard to know something if you have access to their social media and you know ahead of time you're going to be doing an interview with this person, Lisa. And if your uh, social media is locked down, that don't mean much of a thing if you exist in the United States, because you can find out almost anything. Um, you can go from one person's page to another person's page to another person's page. Even if you don't link in your, in your um, profile that this is my sister, what ends up happening is when you put something up and it's public, people can see it, especially for these public figures that we're talking about right now. It has, um, they write comments and somebody will say, hey, sis, th just thinking of you. And then you say, oh, there's a sister. Click on their on their hyperlink to their page and then you go to their page and there, there they are. And since they're sisters, what is one, the history, the family history of one person is the family history of another person. Okay, and I also want to point out I have to have this conversation with people constantly. You do not have to be on social media. This information is available on Ancestry or it's it, it, um, it just on uh, newspapers.com, different kinds of stuff. Because Thomas John did not have to come up with the anniversary. His task was not to see who was having an anniversary. You're thinking about it the wrong way around. All Thomas John has to do is he says, I'm going to be on this show. I need to find out something personal about Lisa Wexler. And then he just goes and finds something. It could have been about a dog. It could have been a birthday. It could have been about a, a, a graduation. Somebody's graduating from college. It could have been uh, somebody's new occupation. It could have been anything found on that uh, social media. And then at this point in the reading, he would say, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that person because I wanted you to know that I'm hearing from Uncle Jack or Papa Jack that there is a graduation coming up. Somebody he's very proud of. I see them in their cap and gown. I see them holding a diploma. I see them with a very great life in front of them. Okay. Or he could say, um, you know, Papa Jack is telling me about a dog, this poor dog. He's been here. I, I'm not very good with dogs. He might be, he's, uh, I don't know, a Labrador. I don't, I don't know. The name starts with an S or maybe could it be, see what I'm saying? It's not that Thomas John had to find an anniversary for the 50th, 5th. He just had to find something. And when he found something, he just says it's coming from the, um, the whoever he's determined he's found who's dead so that's called hot reading folks that's hot reading 101 so is it more what what is more likely that he's contacting dead people dead people and they're telling him about a 55th wedding anniversary coming up or he went to instagram and looked it up so 
that's how it goes. Now, I'm not going to play the rest of the reading because this has already gone long enough. You can listen to it longer if you want to. I believe what ends up happening is she she ends up cutting off all her callers and interrupts them and brings her sister, Jill, the one we just we, we just uh, looked at her Instagram page on, and they go back and forth about how exciting that, that Thomas John is now in contact with Papa John. Papa Jack, sorry. Papa Jack. Is there a Papa John at the pizza place, right? <laughs> So I'm going to end this here, and then I'm going to go and we're going to listen to the next recordings for the people who are calling in. Now, when they call in, it's a completely different animal because he can't look them up. I don't think that they're hot reading these people because, I mean, it's possible. There is a screener. So that was that. Um, please look in the, look for the second video. I will have this reading in the description so you can go and look at it yourself. And if there's something that I have missed, please let me know. If there's something that's missing that the psychic should have known, let's let's reveal that too, because that's sometimes more what's missing is 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 just as important as what's not there. No, what is there? What is there is almost as important as what's missing. Oh, by the way, once we have these people's names, ancestry is wide open. We can find out where they came from. Um, how long they've been in the United States, where they settled at, grandmas, grandparents, cousins. And that leads you into all kinds of rabbit holes. I mean, we could spend hours on it. Anybody who's done genealogy knows how much is out there, especially with people who are, are the age that Papa Jack would be. That whole story about getting the anis, you know, all that is probably exists somewhere on um, maybe even a newspaper archive. But Thomas John didn't do it. He just needed just this anniversary and the na couple names, and that's all he needed. So please comment in the in the uh, comments under this YouTube video. I look forward to hearing from you what you really think. Am I too hard? Too hard on them or about right? 